All right, we're almost done with the multiple choice, number 28. Uh, to, to calculate the volume of a small wooden cube, Ezra measure an edge of the cube as 2 centimeters. The actual length of the edge of Ezra's cube is 2.1 centimeters. What is the relative error in the volume? And keyword here is volume. Calculation to the nearest hundreds. So what we do is actually find the volume of this cube. Okay. So Ezra measure it to be 2 centimeters for each edge. And this is uh, my best drawing of a cube. Okay. Each side is 2. All right. So the height, the length, the width of each is 2. The volume of a cube, right? Volume is equal to length times width times height. In this case, volume is equal to two times two times two, and that is eight. Okay. Well, that's Ezra's measurement, and uh, I'll put Ezra here. The actual, actual measurement is 2.1 for each side. So instead of the new volume, the actual volume is 2.1 times 2.1 times 2.1. So let's plug into the calculator and see what you get. You get 9.261. Okay. Now the relative error formula Right? And depending on how your school teaches it, um, it could be the error measurement, the wrong measurement, or Ezra's measurement, minus actual measurement, divided by actual measurement. And we're going to take the absolute value, absolute value of whatever the answer is. Because when we're measuring something, relative error can be a negative if, uh, error. So in this case, let's plug in numbers. Ezra's measurement is 8. The actual measurement is 9.261 divided by 9.261. Okay. And you put this in a calculator. Right, nine, I mean 8 minus 9.261 is going to be negative uh, 1.261 divided by 9.261. And this will be uh, negative 0.136, right? Which we're taking the absolute value, so it becomes a positive, right? Becomes a positive 0.136, and that should be should be your answer. Positive 0.136 is your relative error. Oh, we're rounding off to the nearest hundred, so. Let's round this off. Six here. We're gonna round it off, and that's gonna be 0.14, right, to the nearest hundreds. And that would be choice two. Okay, number 29. We're trying to express this in simplest form. Therefore, combining these two, uh, let's find the common denominator between 4a and 3a, right, find the lowest common denominator uh, between 4 and 3, that's actually going to be 12. Right? So let's find, uh, let's change 4a right, into 12. Well, what do we need to multiply 4a by to get 12? We need to multiply the 3 on the bottom, and wherever we multiply the bottom by, we also need to multiply the top by. So it's 3 over 3, and the top is going to be 3 times 6, which is 18. And on the other side, we we'll also need to change the 3a also to 12a. Right? So what do we need to do? Multiply by 4 on the top and bottom. Okay? And the top 2 times 4 is 8. And now we're going to subtract. We can subtract now because they both have the same common denominator. 18 minus 8 on the top is going to be 10. And on the bottom is going to be 12a. We don't, we don't subtract the bottom. We just subtract the numerator. Now this looks like choice four. That's actually not the answer because the answer is asking for simplest form. So if you can, you gotta reduce this to simplest form. Well ten divided by twelve is the same as five over six. So the answer is five over six A. Choice two.
Okay, number 30. The set notation. Um, another way to write out um, this set over here, bracket 11, comma 12, is uh, I'm, I'm looking for a number. It's the same as a number, number x. It's greater or equal to 11, but less than or equal to 12. Okay? And it could be a lot of different numbers here. It could be 11.1, 11.2, includes 11, and it could include 12. But for this type of question, they're only looking for integers. And each one's integers. So it can't be decimals, it can't be fractions, it's just whole numbers like such as 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, etc., etc. So which one of these um, resembles the same thing? It's the numbers between 11 and 12. Well, if you think about the integers for this example, what numbers it could be, it's actually just 11 and 12, right? It can't be 10 because that number x is greater than 11. It needs to be greater or equal to 11, and it can't be more than 12, okay? The numbers I'm looking for is really just 11 and 12. Which one of these choices, these choices will give you 11 and 12? Well, if you look down, uh, there's only one. It's actually choice 4 here. And choice 4 means the same thing x is greater than 11 and less than or equal to 12 where x is an integer but what numbers is greater than 10 that is an integer well the first number has to be 11 right again we're not dealing with fractions of decimal you can't say 10.2 or 10.3 it needs to be whole numbers right it needs to be integers so the first number if it's greater than 10 has to be 11 and is less than or equal to 12 next one is 12 right we can't go to 12.5 we can't go to 13 and that's it. All right, 11 and 12, same as my question description, 11 and 12. And that's the answer. Okay? Tough question. You do need to understand some concepts of set notation and also what an integer is. Tricky question, that's why it's number 30. Right? Usually the questions get more difficult as the numbers get higher. Thank you for watching, and good luck on the regions.